Today we have a pretty cool challenge, which is building a mixed reality productivity app from the ground up using Meta's building blocks in combination with various features from the Meta's XR all-in-one SDK. We'll start by configuring a new Unity project and then jump right into it by setting up a measuring tape feature, which will allow us to mimic a measuring tape but in mixed reality. Next, we'll add a label to track measurements in inches and also centimeters. And lastly, we'll incorporate a leveling tool to ensure surfaces or frames are properly leveled. All right, guys, so I wanna show you what we're going to be building today, which is going to be the measuring tape. We're also going to have the initial point, the ending point, the actual label that is displayed once we're doing a measurement is also going to be something that we need to build and also calculating where that it's going to be placed. If you notice, when I'm placing the actual measurements, there's going to be a label right above the controller and there's also going to be a change on the position of the labels once we place the last point, which is going to be the ending point. So the reason for that is so that we can have them in the middle, it's more consistent. We're also going to have one that shows at all times as we're measuring. That is going to just help you in doing the right measurement. And that's based on the different tests that I run as I was building this tool for my own purposes because I do a lot of things like this around my office. So I figure why not build something that could help me in my own little projects. And in this other example, I wanted to build what I call a reference frame mount. And this allows you to place three different points. So we have the initial point, then we can place the second point. And then once you place the last point, the system is going to automatically basically generate a frame and it's going to be a square. And then we can designate where the screw is going to go and that's going to allow you to basically grab it and then we can place it on the wall so that we can mount the frames in the right location, which I'm pretty bad at doing in real life. So this utility is going to help me in improving that process. All right, guys, so next, let's go ahead and get the project set up. I'm just gonna go ahead and call it Meta XR Productivity App, and then just go ahead and hit Create. Then we're gonna go into the Package Manager and I'm going to have you install the com.learnxr.core, which I normally tell you to drag and drop into Unity, but I decided to create a package that is going to make it easier for, you know, going forward for me to provide you with assets. So just go ahead and install it as I'm showing you right now. And then once you get it installed, it's going to have all these different prefabs that I want to share that are very common. There's also going to be couple of different files in here that are, it's a single tone. There's also a couple of different helpers, a billboard alignment, which we're gonna be using today. So just go ahead and get it installed. It's pretty simple. There's not really too much into it. Then go into build settings, and then we're gonna be changing this to be Android. Once you do that, then go back to the package manager, and then we're gonna be installing the Meta XR all-in-one SDK. And then we can go ahead and go into project setup and then fix everything because thankfully, Meta is providing us with these tools that now allow us to fix and basically it's going to apply all the different settings that we need in order for us to be able to run these in mixed reality or virtual reality. Then we're going to be installing the Oculus plugin for Android and also for a standalone. Then go back into Oculus and then make sure that we enable the Quest Pro and also the Quest 3. Then go ahead and remove the global volume, also the camera. We can then go into Meta Building Blocks and we're going to be installing the pass-through building block and we're going to have a dependency on the camera rig. Also controller tracking because we're gonna be using controllers specifically for this experience. I might add hands later on, but the grab interaction that we're gonna add is going to add hands Automatically, we're not gonna use it today, but it's going to add it for you. Then the next thing that I wanna show you though is we have all of these different interactions. Well, right now the Grab Interactor, but we need to add one more Interactor that we'll add in just a minute. For now, go back into the Project Setup tool and we have to apply a couple more changes because we added the camera pass-through. Then go into the packages and we're gonna be adding the controller Puck Interactor. The reason for that is because I want to use this component to be able to interact with the user interface. We're gonna be building a very simple user interface today, but it's going to basically walk you through that process so that you understand it. Then if you go back into the camera rig, you're gonna see all the different dependencies 
that this building block has. In addition to the Quest 3 and Quest Pro was enabled, we're gonna be changing these to only use controllers just for now. And then make sure that you go through and look at the settings that were enabled automatically for us. You may be asking, how are we going to be using all of these features, right? Well, pass-through is purely used to see the real world through the MetaQuest 3 pass-through cameras, also referred to as mixed reality. Then we'll use the controller tracking information to be able to capture controller's positions and also rotations in 3D space to draw or measure and take points. Grab interactors will allow us to grab and move or level two, and poke interactors will allow us to interact with the user interface. So next we're gonna be adding a new game object that is going to basically resemble the tape area that we're gonna have at the bottom of the controllers. Just go ahead and basically set everything to zero on the position. Then go ahead and create a new folder, which is gonna be basically the prefabs folder. We're gonna have multiple things in here. And then we're also going to be setting the Z axis to zero. And it's going to be right now set at the, basically at the pivot point of the controller area. So that's okay. We're gonna be basically dragging and dropping those next to the controller tracking left and next to the controller tracking right. That's going to allow us to use the parent as the position of this component and then we can offset it a little bit by just changing the position and also that rotation. You guys can see it here at the pivot point. So let's go ahead and just adjust the X axis a little bit here and also the Y axis. And then we're also going to offset it on the Z axis so that we have it at the very bottom. And then if you get closer to it a little bit, let's rotate it to be just about 130 on the negative axis. And then just go ahead and mirror it so we have it on the right controller as well. So that's gonna help with the, basically as a marker for the measuring tape. Then we're gonna be creating a new game object and then zero out everything here. This is gonna be for the measuring tape feature. Then we're also gonna need a script. So we're gonna start with creating a new folder and then call it a script. And then in here, we're gonna be creating a script with the same name. It's gonna be measure tape feature. First, we're gonna be creating a range. And this is because I want to be able to have a slider on the tape width. Then make a field serializable here for the tape width. Then we can initialize it right now to be 0 0.01. Then we're gonna be creating another serializable field. So just go ahead and make it private as well. And then this is gonna be for the bound that we're going to be using to activate that measuring tape. So when you press it, it's going to start drawing. And then when you let go of that button, it's going to basically stop drawing the line render. And then also material, which is going to, for now, we're gonna set it to be that default line material. Then create a game object that is going to basically hold the measurement info prefab. That's going to be the actual label that we're gonna be using to display the distance. Then we're gonna be creating another private variable here. And this is gonna be for the left controller tape area and also for the right controller tape area. This is needed so that we know the actual position and rotation of the tape area so that we can start drawing that line render points at that point. And then on the actual method below that we're gonna be creating, it's gonna be private void and then handle controller actions. This is gonna be basically the entry point for the controller actions that we're going to be basically listening to. So we're gonna be passing the controller and also the tape area. And then I'm also going to basically listen to the get down here. And then we're gonna be passing in the action that we're gonna be listening to. And then also the controller that we need to basically listen to on the input. And then we're also gonna do the get. So get down is gonna be when we press the button. Get is gonna be as we're holding the button and then the get up is going to be once we release the button. And we need this because we're going to be keeping track of the points on the line render. We need to draw it, we need to stop drawing it. So this is what this is gonna be used for. So on the update, we can now call into these handle control actions. I'm gonna bind this to the left touch and also the right touch. That way we can do it either with the left controller or with the right controller and also passing the right tape area. Then we're gonna be creating a brand new method. This is gonna be so that we can basically refactor the code and that we have methods that are responsible for specific areas. In this case, the handle down action 
is going to be when we're holding, when we first press the trigger button, and then we're also gonna have some for hold and also one when we release. So in this case, we're gonna be passing in the tape area and then on the case that we're doing, actually a get up, when we release the action, I want to basically call into the handle up action. Otherwise, I'm gonna call into the handle hold action. So for now, this is just going to be executing those methods. So we're basically gonna call into those actions, listen for input, and then we have the three different methods that are going to be basically implementing our logic. So the next part is going to be another private variable. This is so that we can keep track of all the different line renders that we're going to be creating. In my case, I'm gonna call it the save tape lines. So think of a tape line as being the actual line render. And then this one is going to hold the last line render that was created. That way I know which points to which line render to basically adjust. So if we go down here, I'm gonna show you how this, how this is going to work. So if we go and create a new method, this is gonna be the create new tape line. This is gonna be the one responsible for basically creating the actual line render that you saw on the initial examples. We're gonna be passing in a vector, which is gonna be the initial position. And then I'm gonna be creating multiple tape lines. So these are going to, they're going to have a specific name. So it's gonna be tape line underscore and then the count. And then you can also designate what type of objects or components this new game object is going to have. Then I'm gonna go into the, the, the last tape line render and then make sure that we get the line render that we just created on the game object. We can also designate here how many points we're going to have. In our case, we're gonna have two different points. It's gonna be the starting point and then also the end point. And then we also need to designate the width of the line. So I'm just gonna set the start width and the end width to be basically the same value. Then we're gonna be basically passing in the material that we're going to be setting through the inspector. In our case, it's gonna be a white color. So we're gonna be passing that tape material. And then for the initial position at index zero, we're gonna be passing in the vector that we passed in through that method. And then we can add this new line basically to our list. Then the handle down action is going to be the one that is going to be passing the tape area, that position. So whatever the controller position is going to be, where the tape area is, then it's going to designate where the starting point is going to be. So the next thing that I need to do though, is if we go under the inspector, we need to bind all of our properties in here. So we're gonna do the materials, also the left and right tape area. So now let's go ahead and switch these to Windows, Mac and Linux, because we're gonna be testing this with the simulator. And you can see now that everything is working successfully. We can draw lines by moving our controllers in the Meta XR simulator. I can also do it with the left controller. And you can see here in Unity that we can also see the line renders and the objects that are created dynamically. Now, if we go back into Unity though, we can also launch this on a different synthetic room. So this is just a different room that I wanted to test with. Now let's go back into Unity and then we're gonna be creating our new Basically, it's gonna be the label that it's going to be displaying the distance. So it's gonna use Text Mesh Pro. So let's go ahead and give it a more meaningful name. So we'll call it Measurement Info. And then we're also going to be offsetting this a little bit because right now it is pretty gigantic. And then let's change the rotation here and now so the scale value, the scale value, it's going to be a lot smaller. You can see that now it's starting to look a lot better. So the text for now, I'm going to be using mark because I want to have some kind of a fading on the text. So you can use mark. You can also change the value of mark by applying an alpha value. As you guys can see here, there's a little bit of an alpha value applied to it. And we can also add some padding if you wanted to keep some spacing. I think it just looks a lot better. And the padding is gonna be 20, 20, 10, 10. And once you get that going, I don't know that we need the color in there because it's already white, but I'm just gonna put it and, and set the attribute to color. Then I'm going to go ahead and clone the actual font. And then let's go ahead and drop the new font in here by copying and pasting it. And I'm gonna call it underscore tape so that we know that it's gonna be a font specifically for the actual label that we're creating. The reason for that is because I want to change the style of it a little bit. So the font size, let's go ahead and change it a little bit. I'm gonna set this to black 
and then we can also change here the alignment and then I want to change the font and also the outline so that's why I ended up cloning the text and you can also change the softness and also this other property in here it just makes it look a lot better and the outline is going to give it you know more depth so that we can see it it makes reality a lot better it's going to give it a black outline you can adjust it as needed and then we can also change the dilate i think that's how you say that but i think that looks pretty good right now and then just go ahead and make a prefab out of it by dragging and dropping it into prefabs so what i'm going to do though is i'm going to go back into the measuring tape feature and then just associate that measuring info prefab then we're going to be creating a new a new c sharp script and this one is going to be for keeping track of some of the values for the tape line. This is gonna be the relationship between the lines and also the label that we're gonna have and also some calculations that we're gonna be using. So now let's go ahead and add our new measurement info controller offset. This is so that we can have an offset on the controller. So when we place this label, I don't want that to be on the controller, you know, pivot point. I wanna have an offset and this is a value that will work great for that. Then if you go into our list, let's go ahead and use the measuring tape class that we just created. And then we're also going to be getting the last measurement info because we're going to need to adjust the position of it. Then go back into create new tape line. And then in this case, we're going to be instantiating our new measurement info prefab. We're going to place it at zero on the position and also identity quaternion, so basically no rotation. And then in this case, we can get the text mesh pro. Once we have that, I'm going to go ahead and make it inactive because I don't want to see that unless we are pressing, you know, one of the buttons on the controller. And then we can add the new tape lines. This is going to change because we have a new type. And then passing the tape line and then the tape line is going to be what we just created. And the tape info is going to be the label that we just created. Then we're going to have to have a method that basically keeps track of the actual label. And by keeping track of it, we need to basically place it at the appropriate location. So this method is going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple of comments in here. And then I'm going to say if we are currently attaching this to the controller, we can go ahead and enable it. So we're going to have it visible. And then I also want to change the actual pairing of this object to be the tape area. That way it is within the controller. So as you guys saw on the demo that I show you, that's going to show as long as I am currently holding the button. And then as soon as I release, we're gonna place this on the, between the beginning of the starting point and then the ending point of the line render, which is the comment that I'm telling you in here. So you can see last measuring info and then that transform, we're going to be changing the parent of it to be basically the last tape line render transform. So we're gonna place it right at that tape line. And then we're gonna calculate what the midpoint is going to be. So to do that, it's pretty easy. You can just take in the, basically the first point that we draw or the, yeah, the first point that we draw and then sum the second point. And then you can divide that by two and that's going to give you a vector that it is between those two points. So once we have that, we know where to put it, right? So we can go ahead and change here the position of it by going into the last measuring info, transform position, attach and detach measuring info, and then passing the tape area. It's going to have attach controllers to true by default, so we don't need to specify. Then in our handle of action, we're going to be setting it to false because we want that label to be placed at the midpoint then I want to be able to only allow one controller at a time and that's just to keep this code simple. So we're gonna be adding a reference to the current controller and I'm also going to be checking in here to make sure that current controller is not the controller and then the current controller is not null. That way we can always make sure that this is going to be executed through the life cycle of pressing and letting go of the trigger button. And then the other thing that I need to do though is I need to set it to null on the release of the trigger button. Then you guys can see here that in the simulator, we can now basically draw our lines and then the labels are getting placed correctly. It's gonna be placed right above the controller whenever I'm moving the controller and holding the button. Then when I release the button, it's going to be placed in the middle. Then we need to basically calculate the distance because I wanna show the distance in inches and also in centimeters. So we're gonna be doing a vector calculation. So just to vector that distance and then passing the first position, 
and also the second position. So that's going to give us a distance in meters. And then just call into calculate measurements. So now you guys can see here that I have the measurement info brief up. We're gonna be adding the billboard alignment so that it basically this component is going to be looking at the camera and it's going to be rotated correctly. So then what we need to do now though is in order for this to work, we need to add a reference to the camera rig. That way the component that I created, it's going to be pointing correctly to the camera, which is what I'm doing right now. So now if we were to test it though, you can see now that the lines are looking great. The actual labels are changing as I basically move the controller from one position to another. And these are looking great. The other thing that is working right now is the alignment, right? The labels are actually looking at the camera. The camera happens to be the center eye anchor. So that's going to be on my headset and things are working pretty well. So if we were to test it with the simulator by using a different synthetic environment, you can see as well that this is working in here. So I tend to use both, use the actual deployment to a device and then also test it right on the simulator. So that way you can get the best of both worlds. And then let's go ahead and clean this up by making sure that we destroy everything on destroy. And then I'm also going to be changing the position of the label by calculating the cross product. That way we can offset it a little bit and it's just no colliding with the line render. So you guys can see here when I place a line, basically the when I let go, it's gonna be placed at the middle but it's going to be offset a little bit so that it's basically not right at the same position as the line and we can basically read it. So now you can also look at it from the Unity view and it's just always helpful to look at that. So now you can see that when I deploy it, it's going to have basically the offset by the calculation that we did on the line cross product. And you can see here that now the, I think the label looks a lot better because it's not right on top of the actual line render. It's just a couple of little polishing faces that I wanted to do. So now let's go ahead and go back into Unity and we're gonna start working on the leveler feature. This came to mind because I wanted to create something, you know, in mixed reality that could mimic what I normally do in my office. So I try to mount different things in my office. I try to help, you know, different people with it. So why not create a level tool that could mimic what we do in real life? So I'm just gonna show you here how we can create it by just using primitive shapes and then offsetting some of these values and then also adding a label to it that is going to have the angle of this level tool. So as we rotate it, we're gonna be changing the value which is going to be in degrees. So if we go ahead and change it to 10, 180, this is just so that it, basically we can make sure that it's going to fit. So the next thing that I need to do though is we need to implement the actual code that it's going to drive this component. So what I'm gonna do before we do that, we need to also add a grab interactor and that way we can grab this object and we can move it around. So let's go ahead and grab the building block called grab interaction. And once you do that, it's going to do all the magic for you. It's going to add the grab interactable and all the different components that are required in order for you to basically interact with this object in virtual in virtual reality or mixed reality. And then let's go ahead and make a prefab out of it. So I think we're good here to start implementing this. So let's go ahead and offset it to zero. We're also going to be doing a slider in here. The reason for this slider is because I want to add a tolerance and the tolerance is gonna determine at what point the outer area of the level tool is going to be set to a color. That way we know that things are level. Then we know when things are not level. So I'm just gonna keep it simple and if it's the value of five then or negative five, then we're gonna set it to green. Otherwise, we're gonna set it to the original value. So we need to get the leveler outer render to do that. I also need to get the actual reference to the reading text, the leveler reading text so that we can change the value in degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and cache the actual color value so that we can restore it back. So to do that, we can just do that on the awake. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, give me that leveler default color from the leveler outer render, and then just get it from the material color, just like I'm showing you 
right now it's pretty pretty straightforward then what i'm going to do though on the actual update method we're going to be doing a calculation to get the basically the up vector of this object and also the world of vector which is basically going to be set to vector 3 that up and then we can use math f and then route round to in just to keep it simple i don't want to decimal points and then vector 3 that angle is going to give us the calculation that we need to get the angle here in degrees and then we can also get the cross product of these to be able to basically determine what the sign is going to be because i want to show if we're going to a negative value or a positive value depending on the rotation of the level tool and then i also need to set the text because that's the whole idea right we want to see what the angle is and i can also you know basically add the degrees angle in here and i'm also going to be calculating the color here determining what the color is based on the angle and also the tolerance so you can add it you can add more details to this if you want to do you know degrees of 180 degrees of 90 but for now it's just going to be anything between negative 5 and 5 that way we can just keep it simple but you can extend it and make it you know polish it a lot more so that's how this is going to work we just have a couple of serializable fields and then also some calculation in here for the actual degrees and the color of the level tool. Now, if we go back in here and we drag and drop the level or feature, we can start basically associating everything. I'm gonna associate the actual render, also the reading text so that we can basically interact with it from code. With the simulator, you can see that now I can grab the level tool we can you know move it with the left controller i can go to a negative number i can go to a positive number but this is a pretty simple implementation of you know creating something like this that it's pretty helpful if you are decorating your house or making changes that require a level tool so now if we go back into unity i'm going to go ahead and drag and drop a couple of components that are going to add a level of polishing to this experience so I'm gonna be linking those in the comments below, but just make sure that you also get those. There are many examples in here from Meta that allows you to create menus to, you know, to mimic what I'm gonna be doing. But for now, let's go ahead and follow along and make sure that you drag and drop these components. And you guys can see here, this is just a texture that I have on some of the icons on the UI, one for the leveler, one for the ruler. In this case, I'm just going to be using the leveler icon I'm also going to be adding uh, basically a recycle bin to be able to delete all the objects. But for now, we're just gonna keep it simple. So let's go ahead and drag and drop our MR toolbox menu, which we use add it. And it's gonna be a very simple menu that is going to allow us to basically add a leveler and also to delete all the objects that we have created. In this example, you can see measure off, and then that's going to be toggled to measure on. I was going to do that for this tutorial, but I decided to just keep it simple and just do the at leveler. And then there's going to be a recycle bin that is going to delete everything that we create, including the levelers and also the lines that we're creating when we're measuring things. So for now, let's go ahead and just tweak some of this UI. I'm going to go ahead and go into the menu panel. You can see that we have a rounded box property that you can use. This is from Meta to basically change the rounded corners. If you want it rounder, if you don't want it rounder, you can change some of the radius options that this component has. It's pretty helpful and I recommend looking at these tools. And then you can also change the color of the borders and also the background if you wanted to do that as well. It's gonna keep it simple, yellow, because it matches the tape area that we have in here. Just, it gives you a consistent look and feel. So the next thing that I'm gonna do though is I wanna move the uh, leveler up. So I'm gonna put it right there and then the other option, it's going to be for the actual recycle bin. So let's go into the actual prefab. I'm gonna go ahead and move it up. And then the other one right here, the actual measure option is going to be all renamed. So I'm gonna go ahead and tweak it here a little bit, move it down. We also need to change the value. So because it's gonna be, I'm basically repurposing this to be clear all if you wanted to call it that way so if you go to material icons on google we're going to be downloading we can just download this recycle bin and then you can scale it i'm just going to scale it up pretty high to a value that i think just looks a lot better you probably don't need it that high 
But in my case, that's what I did. We can change the alpha is transparency. So we have some transparency on the icon and then we can just clone one of the materials that I had to drag and drop and then just change the texture to be the delete all icon texture. So you guys can see here and now we have the right material. Then go into the menu feature and associate the button for menu activation to whatever button you want to use. And also we need to associate the level of prefab so that we can instantiate it. So I'm gonna make it a prefab as well so things are consistent and I think everything looks good here so far. So the next thing that we need to do though is we need to bind the leveler option and also basically these two different buttons to the methods that we created very quickly through the menu feature so we can instantiate everything. Also, if you're curious about the menus and the buttons that I have on the actual UI, you can also look at these examples that Meta provides under the Meta XR Interaction SDK Essentials and also the components that I just show you. So if we go back into the pointable Unity event wrapper on both of our menu options, we can associate it to the right method so we can delete everything here and also the leveler option is going to be associated to the right method. So now if we go into the actual Meta XR simulator, you can see that we have the menu showing correctly. I can move my controller. We can place a level or two. I can also, you know, place it right on the desk if I wanted to. So you can also rotate some of these, you know, some of these objects if you wanted to. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab it one more time and then rotate it and you can see the color change. So this is just really helpful to use if you're testing, you know, you want to test changes pretty quickly. I think the Meta XR simulator is really, really helpful when it comes to that. So this just gives you an idea of how things work. So now if we go back into the actual device, you can see that now we can place a level tool. I'm going to place it here on my desk. I'm also going to rotate it negative 90 or you can rotate, you can rotate it if you wanted to, to be 90. But this gives you an idea of the power of creating something like what I created today that didn't really take that much work and that much time. But you can see here, I can measure these boxes. This happens to be some haptic gloves that I got a long time ago. And also the book here, we can measure it. It's about 10.82 inches. And then I can also measure my tables. And that's how you go about creating a simple productivity application for a Meta Quest 3 device by using building blocks and mixed reality. If you want to learn how to implement multiple controller support, as I show you in today's full demo, consider becoming a patron under the full source code here. Also, huge thanks to all my 16 patrons. And for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, please do so as I plan to keep making small app prototypes where I teach you like we did today. If you guys have additional questions, let me know below. And thank you very much for your time.